After spending the last year digging through scientific studies trying to find the best information out there, I'm about to answer every single question you've ever asked about protein. So how much protein do you actually need? When it comes to general health, the World Health Organization recommends 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight each day. This is the same as 0.36 grams per pound. So someone who weighed 70 kilograms or about 154 pounds would only need 55 grams of protein per day. To be honest, it's pretty hard not to hit 55 grams of protein each day. I mean just 200 grams of chicken has around 60 grams of protein and you could easily eat that in one meal. Here in the UK the NHS recommends 55 grams of protein per day for males and just 45 grams per day for females aged 19 to 50. That's less protein than you get in a box of 20 chicken nuggets from McDonald's. However these recommendations don't take resistance training into account and most experts would agree that more protein is going to be required. This is backed up by a massive amount of scientific evidence showing the health benefits of high protein diets. While sports nutrition research has clearly shown that the recommended amount of protein for the average person just wouldn't be enough to support, let alone maximize muscle growth. So to build muscle, we're gonna need more. But how much more? Well that depends whether you're cutting, bulking, or doing a body recomp phase. If you're cutting, that means you're eating fewer calories than you burn throughout the day. So your body's getting fewer calories from food, and as you'll have a lower body fat level and less glycogen stored that you can use as fuel, your body is going to be much more likely to break down muscle tissue to use as a source of energy. To counteract this, the best research recommends increasing your daily protein intake during a cutting phase to 1.8 to 2.7 grams per kilogram or 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound. So the 1 gram per pound rule that you usually hear people talking about lies in the middle of this range. If you're really lean already and your training sessions are pretty intense, then it's best to aim for the upper end of that range. And if you have a bit more body fat and are training more for general health, then the lower end will be completely fine. If you're bulking, you're eating in a calorie surplus, so your body's going to be a lot less likely to break down muscle tissue as a fuel source, as you're already supplying it with enough carbs and fats to burn as energy first. This means you'll typically need a bit less protein when you're in a bulking phase. The best scientific research recommends 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram or 0.7 to 1 gram per pound each day. So one gram per pound sort of ends up on the higher end of the bulk. So if you weigh 150 pounds or about 68 kilograms, you want to aim for around 105 to 150 grams of protein per day when you're bulking. In a body recomposition phase, your goal is to build muscle and lose fat at the same time, while basing your calorie intake around your maintenance. So most people can use the similar protein figures as you would when you're bulking, because when you're at maintenance, you're eating the same amount of calories as you burn each day. So your risk of losing muscle will also be pretty low as long as your training's on point. However, you'll probably be at an advantage if you have a bit of a higher protein diet on a recomp phase, especially if you're in a small calorie deficit or are more advanced in the gym. In my video on how to do a successful body recomposition phase, we decided on the amount of protein that we would need based on our lean body weight. But this doesn't work as well if you're currently at a higher body fat percentage because it can be a little bit harder to work out what your lean mass actually is. So a good alternative method you can use if you're currently overweight or obese is to aim for one gram of protein per centimeter of your height. So if you're five foot five or 165 centimeters tall, you want to get around 100 65 grams of protein per day, which works pretty well, especially if you're at a higher body fat level. But you're probably thinking, it's all well and good eating that much protein, but how much can you actually absorb in one meal? In short, the answer is all of it. Your body can absorb huge amounts of protein in just one meal, probably a lot more than you could actually eat without feeling sick. But absorption is just describing how nutrients pass from your small intestine into your bloodstream. So just because protein is being absorbed, doesn't necessarily mean that it's being used to build muscle. So the question we should be asking is how much protein can your body use in one meal? And this is where experts start to disagree. The earliest research suggested that your body would hit its maximum anabolic response when you ate 20 to 25 grams of protein in one meal. And going above that wouldn't get you any extra muscle growth. But if you think about it, this is pretty unlikely because there are so many athletes that go down the intermittent fasting route and a lot of them don't seem 
seem to be having much trouble getting shredded just from eating one or two meals a day. With more than 50 to 100 grams of protein per meal, and given the amount of muscle they've been seen to build, it's hard to imagine that most of the protein they're eating is being wasted. A more recent 2016 study also disagreed with the original research and showed higher muscle protein synthesis from eating 40 grams of whey protein than 20 grams after a full body workout. This other 2016 study showed a larger amount of muscle protein synthesis after participants ate a meal with 70 grams of protein from beef rather than a smaller quantity of the same meal that only had 35 grams of protein. So it's currently not completely clear how much protein we can actually use per meal, but it's very likely to be higher than we originally thought. But one thing that most experts will agree on is that your protein intake per meal is definitely a lot less important than your total protein intake each day. However, these experts often still suggest that splitting up your protein intake into three to five separate meals is probably going to be best for keeping muscle protein synthesis high throughout the day, as well as being a bit more beneficial for your digestion. Recent 2020 research compared the effects of evenly spreading out your daily protein intake into three meals throughout the day, versus skewing most of the protein into just two meals. The participants were split into these two groups, and after 12 weeks combined with resistance training, they found that the group with evenly distributed protein intake gained 30% more lean muscle mass than the group who only ate two meals, which the researchers attributed to the better muscle protein synthesis levels over the 24 hour period for the evenly distributed group. So to apply this to your diet, take your daily protein intake and split that up into three to five meals with ideally more than 20 grams of protein per meal, as this will help you best optimize your muscle protein synthesis levels throughout the day. So when it comes down to it, you'll still build muscle if you're eating two meals or six meals a day, as long as you're hitting your daily protein goal. Although it might not be quite as optimal the fewer meals you have. Now we all know if you don't get home and get some protein in you within 30 minutes after training, you're gonna be perfectly fine. A lot of people still believe in the 30 minute anabolic window where if you don't eat some protein soon after training then your whole workout session is going to be wasted. But this idea was proven to be a myth years ago and as long as your pre-workout and post-workout meals are within around four to six hours of each other you'll still be maximizing that anabolic response to your training as long as you're subscribed. However if you train fasted that's where having a post-workout protein source soon after your session becomes a little bit more essential because there can be potential for your body to start breaking down muscle tissue to use its energy if it can't get enough elsewhere. But a potentially more important aspect of protein timing that not many people talk about is having protein before bed. This 2016 study described eating protein before sleep as an important opportunity to increase muscle protein synthesis. The study suggested that consuming around 40 grams of protein before sleep, where you're essentially fasting overnight, will improve overnight muscle protein synthesis. I personally aim to get this from slow digesting sources of casein protein such as cottage cheese. However, studies that have directly tested the effects of eating a slow digesting casein protein either before bed or in the morning found no major difference after 8-10 to 10 weeks. It's important to mention though that in both of these studies the participants were eating a high protein diet overall of around 2 grams per kilogram or about 1 gram per pound of body weight. This emphasizes again that as long as as your total daily protein intake is high enough, then the specific protein timings become less important. You've probably heard people saying that a high protein diet is dangerous and it can cause stuff like kidney damage. This massive position stand from the International Society of Sports Nutrition and years of research has shown that the amount of protein recommended in this video isn't just safe but can actually have health benefits. Even if you go way above the recommendations to as high as 4.4 grams per kilogram or 2 grams per pound, where there have consistently been no recorded harmful effects. But does the quality of the protein sources you eat make any difference? Protein quality is often determined by the amount of the amino acid leucine it contains. Leucine is a branched chain amino acid and is especially important because it acts as a sort of trigger that stimulates mTOR, which then starts the process of new muscle growth. In general, around 3 grams of leucine has been shown to be a good number to aim for if we want to maximize the anabolic response to a meal. So let's see how much of different protein sources we're going to need to hit that 3 grams. Probably the easiest and one of the lowest calorie ways to get 3 grams of leucine is with just a 30 gram scoop of whey protein. 
which is typically around 140 calories. You can also get 3 grams of leucine from about 200 calories worth of chicken breast, which contains 40 grams of protein. So adding these to the list with a few other common food choices, you can see that you'd have to eat over 1,760 calories of brown rice to hit 3 grams of leucine. So it would take this much brown rice to give you the same anabolic effect as one scoop of whey protein. In general, animal sources of protein have higher leucine contents than plant-based protein sources, especially if you were looking to get the same number of calories. But if you're vegan or vegetarian, then you can get around this pretty easily just by using vegan protein powders. There are so many options like pea protein, soy and brown rice isolates, which can give you 3 grams of leucine for under 200 calories. But leucine isn't the only deciding factor when it comes to protein quality, because although leucine will always initiate new muscle growth, you still need the other 8 essential amino acids to actually build that new muscle. For essential amino acids, we look at the ratio of the digestible amino acid content in the food to the same amount of amino acid in a reference pattern. This is called the DIAA score, and a higher number means that there are more essential amino acids in that specific protein source. Again, you can see that animal and dairy protein sources tend to rank higher, but it's important to note that these tables are based on the protein sources being eaten on their own. In reality, you're probably not going to eat just plain chicken for every meal. So combining a variety of different foods pretty much guarantees that you're going to get enough leucine and the other 8 essential amino acids as long as your total daily protein intake is on point. So a lot of the time, protein quality is actually a lot less important than most people think. And supplementing with leucine, BCAAs and EAAs usually isn't needed as long as you getting a sufficient amount of protein in total each day. But saying that, vegetarian and vegan lifters should pay a little bit more attention to their protein intake while aiming for the slightly higher end of the protein ranges, and may want to consider investing in a high quality, high leucine protein supplement that combines things like pea protein powder and brown rice protein so it has a similar amino acid profile to your typical whey protein. Okay, so taking everything we've looked at so far, the most important factor is your total daily protein intake. But if you really want to optimize your approach, you should look at how you split up your protein intake throughout the day, with 3-5 to five meals being the best range to maximize any anabolic effects. So if you've got those two down, then you're well on your way, and you'll likely get over 90% of your potential results. But specific protein timings and the quality of the protein sources you choose can be worth keeping in mind if you really want to hit all the points for optimization, especially if you train fasted or go without food for a particularly long time overnight. So if you want to see the specific protein sources that I choose on a daily basis, you can check it out in this video next. Okay, bye.